In one of his most beloved songs, French-Armenian singer Charles Aznavour once sung, You must drink up your youth until you are drunk. 15-year-old Yuri is following these lyrics to the letter. This teenager drives without a care in the world and without a license. Yori didn't borrow the family truck without permission. It was his father who asked him to go and fill up the tank. It's hard to say who's the most reckless of the two. Despite his questionable driving skills, the 15-year-old boy makes it to town to fill up the tank. But the task is not as simple as it seems. In Armenia, vehicles run on natural gas and the refueling system is a little outdated. In fact, natural gas is exactly half the price of gasoline. Natural gas tanks in trucks are normally quite accessible, but those in cars are much harder to reach, especially when the trunk is filled to the brim. To the side, a tanker truck is refilling the reservoirs at the gas station. The air reeks of gas, and yet... Suddenly, aware of the danger, the driver quickly comes to his senses. Over the years, the Armenians have become incredibly resourceful. Armenia is one of the most isolated countries in the world and its terrain is very complex. Its roads are surrounded by mountains and are often poorly maintained, so transporting goods is a real struggle. The deplorable state of the road network is partly due to the corruption plaguing the nation. Calling on a higher power is often a last resort to get a vehicle out of trouble. The economic difficulties experienced by a huge part of the population are also largely due to the country's delicate political climate. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, Armenia became independent, but the country quickly found itself in isolation again. The Turkish border is closed due to tensions dating back to the Armenian genocide of 1915 that the Turks refused to acknowledge. The border to Azerbaijan is also closed. Nowadays, it even constitutes a front line for the conflict between the two countries. 
Every year, the clashes between the two nations' armies are significant. They're fighting over the Nagorno-Karabakh region, an area majorly populated by Armenians. The border between Armenia and Georgia is open, but the roads are catastrophic. As a result, goods can only be freely circulated via the main road leading to Iran. Despite all these difficulties, there is only one phrase on all the Armenians' lips. As the first nation to have adopted Christianity, legend states that the Garden of Eden was located in Armenia. In their fallen paradise, the Armenians courageously press on each day, never losing their determination. In the Nagorno-Karabakh mountains, two transporters are trying to get home. With almost 40 miles of mountain terrain to cover, the risk is high. After spending countless hours facing problems on the roads together, Amir and his co-pilot, Amen, are like an old married couple. The fear of the ravine finally causes the two men to fall silent. Their village is an eerie. Situated at an altitude of 2,000 meters, the snaking roads leading up to it are generally only suitable for mules.
Here lies the forgotten village of Chichkak, home to 15 families. Their main source of excitement is watching Amir and Amen come and go. Amen is from Russia. He only came to Tsar later in life. When the USSR collapsed in 1991, he couldn't bear it, so he left his job as a French teacher and moved to Nagorno-Karabakh with his wife Irina. Now they work as livestock farmers and raise their little boy, but Irina still misses her life in Moscow. As for Armin, he has no regrets. He's glad to be away from modern life and societies built on excess. In this remote village, solidarity and friendship are much more important. On this particular day, the two friends behave a little unreasonably. Luckily for them, it's too late to get behind the wheel, but tomorrow, another obstacle course awaits them. Ninety percent of Armenian territory peaks at an altitude of over 1,000 meters. Traveling through the mountains in summer is not very difficult, but in winter it's an entirely different story. Even small distances require hours of driving. After selling their potatoes at the market, our man and his father head back to their farm. It's only a three-mile journey, but the road has been flooded by the storm and their old Russian Ziguli doesn't quite have the power of a 4x4. Our man quickly gains momentum. His tyres are smooth.
Hema yelnelo vay dejvar pay. Manerit spet ke traktoru bereng vurpezi. Karşa kanek, afton hanek kartofilo. In anticipation of the difficulties to come, our man left his tractor half a mile behind them. The fear of stalling and not being able to start the car again makes him go straight back. Let's cover it. We have a lot of time to track the car. Aman's father, Tsavan, used to work as a general practitioner in town. When he retired, he started helping his son. The two men have their work cut out for them. With so much effort and little reward, the elderly gentleman asks himself daily if he should give up the farm. It takes them two hours to travel just over three miles and they've been lucky. Sometimes it takes them the whole day. Unfortunately, there is a bad surprise on the next road, and this time they can't rely on the tractor to help them out. It has broken down. The two men get ready for another struggle. All throughout Armenia, these steel totems mark out the roadsides. These carcasses remind the drivers that on each journey, danger is never far off. This truck just fell 15 meters. The engine is unsalvageable. As for its owner, he miraculously made it out of the accident with only a few scratches. But the road isn't the only culprit. Armenia is overrun with trucks that are unfit for the road, and this particular truck was a disaster waiting to happen. <laughs> The Armenian government is trying to renovate the country's main roads, but the funds are lacking. When Armenia still formed part of the Soviet bloc, its economy flourished. The Russians transformed the country into an enormous factory. But today, the rusty skeletons of these buildings are all that remain. They are reminders of a time when employment was at a high. These textile factories supplied all of Russia and the zinc mines ran at full capacity. The economy is slowly getting off the ground again. However, 
Almost a third of the country's three million inhabitants are currently living below the poverty line. These men aren't the only ones struggling with the cold. There's nothing like a hot meal before a difficult uphill journey, especially since none of these men are truly qualified for the task ahead. These men are engineers, chefs and taxi drivers, but all of them are unemployed. There's no work left in the mountains, so they were forced to join the only field still hiring, the logging industry. But the money isn't in their pockets yet. Their old Russian truck is at the end of its tether. There's no guarantee that it will survive the journey. The truck has six drive wheels, but they're all useless. The tires are completely worn out. Now the men will have to walk for three hours in zero degree temperatures to reach the tree that they need to cut down. <laughs> the men could give up, but the idea of finally making some money keeps them going. <laughs> All that effort for nothing. Ah. 
ամենայն մեծը կտրեցին ձորիվ ծախ, նասկու ոզ է մի հատ։ Այդ տարը նոր մարտարլեր տասին կուպ պետ կնես, բայդ որ կտրեցին կուպ պետ կնես։ Որը մնաց հացալը, լորելով տանում ենք հասունը մեկենային է։ Cutting down another tree would help to compensate for the lack of wood, but it's best not to give in to this temptation. The Armenian forests are endangered. Due to over-exploitation, they've all but disappeared. To prevent deforestation, anyone caught chopping or collecting dead wood without authorization risks being fined. <laughs> Little by little, the Armenians are leaving the mountains in hope of finding a better life in the city. But that's not all. Many are trying their luck abroad. <laughs> Emigration has become a national problem. Since its independence in 1991, more than a million Armenians have left the country. According to a study conducted by the United Nations, if the situation continues, Armenia will lose between five and 600,000 more people in the next 50 years. This morning in Nagorno-Karabakh, Armen and Amir take the snowfall as a bad omen. They didn't expect the temperature to drop so much overnight. The weather immediately brings back bad memories for both of the men. Two months ago, Armen lost control of his van in the snow. He had just enough time to jump out before the vehicle plummeted 300 meters. <laughs> сразу не понимаешь потом естественно страх приходит но значит вот господь решил что еще надо пожить на этой земле Armin's van is now used as a reserve for any spare parts Amir's vehicle may require Говорю, снимай болт. Да, болт снимай. Сколько лет возику? Ну, работает, видишь, 30 лет. And it's a good thing too, because today the two friends are driving two of the women from the village into town to do their grocery shopping. Сейчас не работает. Зарплатный день это у нас, как правило, день выезда, да, куда-то. День выезда за покупку. Life is difficult for these inhabitants and now another tough journey awaits them. Ну это сиденье будет. Люди где сидят? Two hours sat on a tyre, even with a jacket disguised as a cushion. Comfort is a relative concept. And that's without factoring in two surprise guests. The grocery shop is 60 miles away. It's not very far, but in Armenia, every mile is doubled. Hit the 
The passengers might have to use their muscles sooner than expected. Cutting across the field doesn't seem like a very good idea. While Amir tries to make it to the grocery store, at the same time, almost 200 miles away, Tsavan and his son Aman are preparing to take supplies to the isolated villages. These two potato farmers are relying on their old ziguli to get them there safely. This Russian vehicle comes from a time that the youth of today won't remember, the 70s. Our man wouldn't trade it for anything, although a 4x4 would certainly come in handy. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> 
Orada rata hıma. Daha çıkaran gazlayın. A few days ago, the stormy waves got the better of this steel walkway. Ay es kalın imeç. Ay es şap. Ay nayi ki suazı hıma gönüma. Problem ena volta o artem o tazıt içi mecburla ciyot. Motor imeç cürgüna u hapç. Şarj imeç. Some drivers are going all in while the pedestrians do their best Tarzan impressions. <laughs> but some of the risk takers aren't so lucky. After witnessing this feat, our man believes there's a chance that his car could fare just as well. Once again, Arman Zohu Zaguli proves that it still has a few good years left. Go ahead, make another shot. There are many of the Rana Talishmers. Urahim, Tanjum, and Ashatum, and Stertum, and there are many Talishmers. Tosha is worth the stun of the Tanjum. Anush is one of the last remaining inhabitants of this village. She's watched it slowly empty out due to the lack of jobs. In reality, the exodus began several years ago. In 1988, this region was ravaged by an earthquake. Although it only lasted eight seconds, it was so powerful that it caused the deaths of almost 30,000 people. Thousands of houses turned to dust. Before the earthquake, this village had more than a thousand inhabitants. Sa gyuri de protsna de protsna tarats ashajanu vor unetsile halutanasun tsavel ashager Nima lutsantsuner lenuma hachakhaki che bazle tarin mi ankam erku ankam lenum Dur sen galis aya monsur karkin mi kich an mi kan ijamasnu nor Most of the houses were never rebuilt and Armenia's bad luck continued. In that same year, another disaster occurred. Armenia entered into conflict with its neighboring country, Azerbaijan, in a dispute over the region of Nagorno-Karabakh, an area majorly populated by Armenians. After six years of war, Nagorno-Karabakh is now an independent republic, supported by Armenia, yet ever unrecognized by the international community. A peace treaty between Nagorno-Karabakh and Azerbaijan has not been established. The clashes between both armies are numerous. Kristina lives in Stepanakert, the capital of Nagorno-Karabakh. Hello. 
From the outside, her life seems very normal, but her job is far from ordinary. Near to the Azerbaijan border, the marks of war are clearly visible. Even though she wears the uniform, Christina is not a soldier. She works for a British organization specializing in mine clearance. Nagorno-Karabakh is one of the most heavily mined regions in the world. Okay. <laughs> Christina has learned to overcome her fear for her three children. Becoming a mine warfare specialist was the only way to improve her quality of life. She now earns 400 euros a month, which is four times the amount she earned as an accountant. <laughs> Over the past 19 years, these mine warfare specialists have destroyed almost 60,000 explosives, but the war is still lurking in the shadows, waiting to resurge again, like in 2016, when the two armies fought for four days straight across the border. The threat of war is a distant worry for Amir and Amen. Right now, their van is refusing to go any further. The fuel pump has died and they've only travelled six of the 60 miles to the grocery shop. Amir tries to reassure his passengers. <laughs> An hour later, Amir finds a solution. An ingenious plan, but this system still has to last for another 50 miles. Hey, 
Es kehrte es kann darin er Charcharuma mehr del Aktien kaufen. Heißt jetzt mal nur ein Xarer im Match am Ende an Kamera. Heißt Problem na mischt mischt mischt. Chenkara el genang. Es ist Chenkara als er zu hängen. C'est trop difficile de monter. Aujourd'hui, on ne passe pas. On revient. Je suis vinavat. Aujourd'hui, je suis vinavat. Je suis vinavat. Je suis vinavat. Je suis vinavat. Je suis There's an Armenian proverb that says that there's a lion living inside the heart of every man. And it's true, the Armenians are determined to succeed, no matter the difficulty. Never 